All right, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Matthew Copel. I'm the Library Services Manager at CLRC in Syracuse. Uh, on behalf of our uh, usage interest group here at CLRC, I'm uh, really happy to welcome all of you and to welcome Oliver Pesh uh, from EBSCO, uh, who's here to go over uh, some of the, the tools of the trade and and have a have a conversation about usage. Um, some of you have submitted questions uh, already uh, through the registration form. Uh, please, please, please feel free to submit more. Um, ask questions uh, through the chat window. Uh, we will uh, either, you know, uh, we'll probably work through them after the presentation. We're here for an hour, and it'll be, a, I'm sure, a tight hour because uh, there's a lot to go through. Um, but uh, we're excited that everybody's here, and we want everybody to have a chance to uh, to ask questions and to learn. Um, as always, uh, if you're in the central New York region and you'd like uh, to hear from a presenter, uh, get in touch. Uh, uh, you can uh, find us at the website clrc.org. We're always happy to, to try to find speakers that are going to help you in, in your professional role and, uh, and to support your professional development. Uh, so. With that, I will hand things over to Oliver Pesh, uh, who's kind enough to spend time with us and and uh, to, to learn and to talk. Uh, so let me go ahead and throw the screen over to you, Oliver. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. All right, I have to. All right. So, you should be seeing my uh, PowerPoint, is that correct? Uh, yes, we can see it. Okay, good, good, perfect. <clears throat> okay, so, um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and <clears throat> uh, Matthew asked me to, uh, to talk about sushi counter and uh, usage in general. Um, just a tiny bit of background on, on, on me. I'm, I work at EBSCO and have done for quite some time in uh, working now on product strategy for products that include our usage consolidation module and e-resource products and so forth. But probably more important to this discussion, I am co-chair of the NISO Sushi Standing Committee. Um, I'm also on the executive committee and board of directors for Project Counter. So um, <clears throat> kind of been deeply involved in both those initiatives um, and get involved in a lot of discussions of usage. So hopefully what we go over today is, is going to be uh, somewhat useful. So the plan was to give a very brief overview of the roles of Counter Sushi Usus, which is something new and, and NISO. Um, just to make sure we have a uh, kind of a, a level set, I'm sure most of you already know these organizations and what they do. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like a random thing thrown in there. What is a platform? That's an area that we often run into confusion, so get that out front and center. Uh, I want to say a few words, which is more from the counter, and counter is trying to achieve consistent credible and comparable usage statistics. Uh, but I've added the other word and achievable. Uh, so I think we can have some discussion there. Looking a little more to the future, this thing called Sushi Light is on its way. So we'll talk about that. Um, also in progress is information gathering for at least five of the counter code of practice. And then we'll open it up to uh, discussion and questions. <clears throat> so, roles of the various organizations. Well, counter, uh, you know, develops codes of practice that lead to consistent, comparable, and credible usage stats. Started in 2002, uh, focuses on journals, books, databases, and more recently, multimedia. Um, codes of practice cover not only the formatting, but also you know, how you present the usage and how the transactions are processed to make sure that the results are credible. And compliance 
um, is enforced through a formal audit. And I'm sure most of you have been here, but here's just a shot of the website. You can get at the uh, code of practice there. And there is up on the top, um, there's a, uh, so I'm trying to find a pointer, I'm not sure. Anyways, <clears throat> up at the top, there's a compliant vendor, so you can look at the compliant vendors and the reports they offer. Okay, Sushi, the rule uh, role of Sushi was to define the message and protocol that enables automatic harvesting and machine to machine to machine. Actually, I've got too many machines in there. Uh, transfer of counter statistics stands for the Standardized Usage Statistics Harvesting Initiative. Uh, it is an ISO standard, um, an ANSI standard. Came a standard in 2004, seven rather, and updated in 2014. And really, it's about enabling the automation of the request and retrieval of XML versions of counter usage reports. Uh, in this context, NISO um, develops and maintains the SUSHI standard, and it's, it's the maintenance agency also for counter schemas. <clears throat> and that's important because that allows. Um, sushi and counter to stay in sync. Um, NISO provides a uh, working group infrastructure, infrastructure to support standing committees, procedures, and policies um, that allow an initiative to be turned into uh, an accredited ANSI standard. And uh, just as a point, you already probably know this, but any change to the standard. An official standard has to be voted and approved by NISO members. So the point there being that even, even if we find um, a minor typo in a standard, um, that technically needs to be revoted. Um, so you can't just change things. And there's a sushi website, the links on the bottom. If you haven't been there, take a look. There's a lot of good stuff there. So USIS is kind of a new player. It's a, if you haven't checked it out, please do so. It's a community website on library usage. It was sponsored by Counter. It's uh, managed um, by librarians. Uh, Ann Osterman, the uh, the executive director of Viva is the, uh, um, well, she's, she runs it. She's the head guru, the supervisory committee, and so forth. And it's intended to be a forum for community discussions on issues related to counter stats um, and a place also to get feedback and collection point for suggestions. So the site looks like this. It's a little more updated than the counter site. Um, and um, I think we'll leave you with these slides. I won't read through all of this. But you can go in, there's hints and tips. So the role of that section is uh, an example today, exact, uh, 10 minutes ago, supervisory committee got a request saying, I'm loading a DB1 report from Web of Science, and it is not counter compliant. And after some digging, we realized that you have to unselect a couple of metric types to make it compliant. Um, and so those are the kinds of hints and tips that would go up, up here. Um, news and opinion. So, so lots of good stuff there. Uh, links to other resources. Um, and Reported issues. Actually, this is where you're going to find most of the problem reports and res resolutions. So, if you're having trouble with the counter report you're getting from the vendor and it just doesn't look right, you can actually go on to USIS and see somebody else's report of the problem and find out whether there is a workaround or if um, you know a fix is in progress. And there's the get in touch button on the top. Use that if you want to make a suggestion. Um, 
respond to any of the surveys and, and similar. Okay, so that's that's uses, and uh, we're, we're hoping that that becomes, you know, a, a, a valuable resource for folks that are are trying to, uh, you know, make their way through the uh, quagmire that can be counter reports. Uh, so I talk a minute about platforms and what is a platform. So examples of platforms, EBSCOhost, Highwire, MIT Press, ScienceDirect, uh, we are all probably familiar with those. And countermeasures usage for the platform, particularly when you're talking about journals and books. Um, so it is the overall usage of that journal or book on the platform. There are no reports by package. So if you're uh, one of the many libraries that gets uh, publisher packages from your uh, journal publishers, um, you can't get a kind of report of your Sage sociology package or something like that. You get your counter report for the titles on the Sage platform. So if you wanted to track usage um, by package, you would need to get your JR1 report, which lists all the usage for all the journals, and then filter that down to just those titles that you know are in the package you care about. So, I mean, that's just a bit of practical um, approach. Um, Currently, there is no uh, other way of doing it. But oftentimes, we get questions of, I want to get my counter report for this package. Well, you really can't do it. OK, so let's now talk about you know, <clears throat> this little subtitle, Achieving the Balance. Consistent, comparable, credible, and achievable. And uh, you know the, the real uh, tagline for Counter is the three C's, um, but achievable is kind of in there as well. But some quick rules of thumb, comparable. And so, you know, if you're if you're looking at a, a new statistic, for example, um, are they really comparable across uh, providers and use, users? And so, one that's come up a few times in the book reports is page views. Well, what's a page? Um, you know, we know what a page looks like on a PDF. That's kind of cool. But what if something is born digital, digital? Do we have to make it be reformatted in a print format, even though it may never actually live in the print world, um, so that we can measure pages? If you take a page and you say, well, a screen is a page, well, then you, know, you have a smartphone, an old smartphone, um, you're going to register a lot more usage than somebody with a desktop with one of these, you know, massive uh, monitors on it. So page use, as it turns out, is not a comparable stat because a page view from one user to the next, even one site to the next, isn't going to give you any comparable data. And, and you can apply this so that you look at other stats. Um, Credible, I throw this in there too. Uh, there's some work going on uh, with the uh, Crossref team and counter, and they're looking at what's called distributed usage logging. So sort of the ability, for example, for a social uh, media site or sharing site or an institutional repository to directly uh, post a usage transaction to the owning publisher. Um, and so, how do you make sure um, that usage is going to be credible? You know, we all know the uh, situations happen. You know, people just massively download the same article over and over again. You know, you've got the issue of double clicks. You've got gaming. You've got robots, and so. 
sufficient data has to be included in the transaction stream, the log, to be able to detect these things and really um, have the counter stats represent what you could consider more of user intention rather than just technical activities that happen. So uh, again, as we look at things like, wouldn't it be nice to have a counter stat for a tweet? Uh, well, how do you know that tweet is a real user and not some robot hammering out, you know, you, you publish a, a great article and then you just um, get your brother-in-law to just have a tweet running 20 times a second for an hour and a half to get your uh, numbers up. Um, consistent, kind of similar to comparable, can the metrics be captured by all or most providers in the same way? So getting back to ebooks as an example, um, there's the uh, occasionally you see the request to get a metric time in book or time in documents, and how long did the user spend in this document? Well, if the host site delivers PDF, you have no idea. There's no way to measure it. And similarly with apps or offline reading, um, you know, so the technology itself limits the ability to capture this. It's not to say that you don't ask a vendor to provide that for uh, use on their platform if that's the kind of um, user uh, experience that they offer, you know, with a uh, de dedicated application or so forth. But it's likely that those it's more difficult for those to become counter reports or counter required reports because uh, counter really can't dictate user experiences. Um, and uh, yeah, so consistency becomes critical. And, and on the achievable front, you know, the question is 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 the metric being captured by the current system? So uh, time in book would be a good one. If the current system doesn't or can't uh, capture that metric, um, it could be incredibly expensive to, uh, to do that. It may require complete re-engineering of a small publisher's online presence. And uh, so the, the thing that counterbalances is if the complexity becomes too high or the cost to implement becomes too high, then the implementation rates start to drop off. And so if nobody's implementing counter reports, then, then it loses its muscle. So, you know, counter always wants to know about the things that you're looking for, the things that you want. And, and we get that list, we get people thinking about them. But sometimes the delay in implementing is not necessarily out of library need or desire, but the ability to actually do a good job of capturing those, those metrics. So again, balancing all of the needs of the library and then making sure that you can actually um, achieve that in a, in a reasonable way. Okay, so I'm not sure how many of you, but some of you have probably have been involved in, in setting up and using uh, a Sushi client or using the Sushi feature of a, of a usage module. And uh, you've probably come across some inconsistencies and incompatibilities. Uh, Sushi in the day was, was uh, developed, I mean, it was started in 2004 or five. Um, was built on the uh, SOAP, Simple Object Access Protocol. Um, and, you know, that was where you did read web services in the day, you know, fairly ro robust for its time, but it is a bit complicated and it is easy to get it wrong. So the Sushi Standing Committee has started this notion of Sushi Lite. 
And um, just to be clear, we're not replacing sushi uh, at some point, maybe, but not now. This is just a technical report, and it describes a lightweight approach to delivering sushi reports using the, sort of the modern techniques of an HTTP REST style um, to get back the content in uh, JSON, I think it's JavaScript online notation. And the contents is easy to consume by web applications. Most developers know these, and it is much, much easier. The other thing it allows is delivering a we call snippets of reports. So let's look at some use cases. So serials management system pulling um, usage for a particular journal. So rather than having to go out and bring in the entire counter report, wouldn't it be great if you could on the fly have your application go say, give me the usage for this ISSN? And an example here is, is, is sort of uh, could be done is where you actually pull back usage in real time. So you don't have to have the application where you store the usage, know anything about counter reports or anything. It just needs to know how to ask for the usage. Um, so she likes also being uh, looked at to deliver uh, article level usage uh, with publishers. <clears throat> usage factor, that's a kind of an impact factor based on usage that, that counter is uh, is promoting and to get the usage factor of a journal you need to exchange article level usage and so sushi light has not has a role there um, alt metrics alternative metric systems exchanging usage data same thing um, it's a great tool for that so here's a, a, a live example and uh, you can see this is just a url where we're requesting something and I'm going to click the button and, and there we go. So we actually pulled in real time usage for this ISSN um, from one of the uh, sample sites. And you can see the usage for the days and months. So it's pretty easy to do, pretty easy to to, to implement. So let's go back to our show. Oops. Hopefully I didn't just kill my session. Um, okay. And there, just in case it didn't work, here it is. And so if you get the PowerPoint later, you'll see this. So some proofs of concept being developed uh, by through um, JESP and JISC, uh, Iris UK, which is a, a uh, the uh, usage statistics being collected for all UK institutional repositories, and the Open Journal Systems. We had a team from uh, University of Pittsburgh working to implement counter reports into OJS and actually implementing them as sushi Lake. So um, the goal of all of this is to uh, make it much easier to pull sushi data into um, any application, but also this will much make it much easier and uh, hopefully uh, a better experience in pulling that usage into your ERM or your uh, usage consolidation module. Okay, so let's talk uh, a little bit about counter release five. Uh, it's in the information gathering phase and the implementation of it we're shooting for, I believe is 2017. Information gathering is probably go through um, spring of next year and then work out the uh, the draft and send the draft out for comment and then make it official and then give um, something like six to nine months lead time for implementation so some thoughts on it and this is not set because we're still gathering information but some discussions 
Uh, new book reports will become required. Um, I've got another slide on this later, so we won't go into too much detail on that right now. I know there's a question on book reports that was sent in earlier. Uh, but also thinking about the role of these alternative or other metrics and, um, you know, how much can counter get involved? Uh, what do we need to standardize exchange? Can we truly add uh, the, the credibility fact, uh, um, factor to it? Or do we just standardize, perhaps help provide a code of practice to standardize the exchange of those? We're also looking at normalizing the report structure. And this is about making these things just easier to use and reducing costs. And also, when you make things the same, um, it's easier for multiple content providers to develop the same thing. So here's an example. On journal report one, um, over on the, the, the uh, left, right, rightmost column, those numbers, there is nothing that tells you what they are. You just kind of know they're full text requests. And they're nicely broken down by month. Then you got this total for HTML and another total for PDF. So if you're trying to pull an annual report and then see how the HTML and PDF perform across the year, you really can't do that. You have to pull a report for every month. And so compare that to database report one. And on this, you actually see we have a column for user activity. So the same database actually appears in multiple rows. So would it be better if on journal report one, um, we had a row for HTML and a row, row for um, PDF and a row for total full text, that sort of thing. So that's kind of what we mean by, by, by normalizing it. Um, and by doing that, you wind up with just really four major report errors. You've got er areas. Um, you've got the platform reports. You've got database reports, title reports, and article reports. So when you think about a title report, really what is the difference between a journal report and a book report? Um, it's really, you know, if you really think about it, it's core. Um, isn't it just that you're pulling titles of a different resource type? And, and maybe you're looking at different metric types, but um, it's just really, they're all slight variations on the same theme. So why would, why should they look completely different? The other thought is we would design these reports to be more XML and now JSON focused with the Excel representation being offered, but almost secondary. So today, um, first thing a, a vendor develops is, is the Excel. And in most cases, the Excel does not translate one for one into the XML. And if you're using ERMs and so forth, you want that XML version. That's the one you want to work the best. So if we focus on the XML first, and then have um, the representation of that in Excel, um, then we're good. Sushi Light really brings in this notion of filters. And I think if you were paying attention to the, uh, the URL I clicked, you notice it had uh, item identifier uh, equals and then the ISSN and these sorts of things. So if you think about pulling in a counter report or using Sushi Lite, the difference again between the book report and the journal report, it's really you're asking for the title report. In one case, you would say, and, and limit to resource types equals monographs. And the other one, you'd say 
limit to resource types equals serials. And uh, theoretically, you could also limit to say, but only show me these three metric types. So it, it allows um, you to get at the data that you need, but it also allows the content provider to uh, you know, kind of requires them to store the granular data, uh, which provides a tremendous amount of flexibility, but it also reduces cost a lot. So if you can get at this data, um, using filters, the difference between the, you're not spending potentially weeks developing each individual report. You sort of develop your title reports and then each, each report is a variation on the theme. And then I'm kind of thinking the Excel versions would just be preset versions of the same reports. So in theory, with the count of the sushi or sushi light, you could combine any sets of filters that you want. But the official JR1 would be the title report filtered to just serial content and limited to metric types of full text request HTML and PDF. OK, so we are at halfway through. And uh, I took a couple questions earlier uh, that Matthew uh, <clears throat> Hold in. So we're going to address this first, and then we can just get into some some other questions and answers. So the um, question is: What advances are being made in usage for book reports? And the answer to that is quite a few. Uh, I think it's pretty widely acknowledged that book report one and book report two are are close to being useless. Um, they're certainly not comparable, and uh, you, know, you get some numbers of use, but for example, a book report to a different vendor has a different definition of what is a section, it's, it's pulling usage by section, and um, so if my section is a, an article like in an encyclopedia, and your section is a page, that's how you deliver it, and somebody else's section is a chapter, the numbers don't add up. And today, if you provide book report two, you do not have to provide the same books on book report one. So if I've got book report one, which is just how many times was the entire book delivered in a as a uh, full PDF, uh, you know, that is no it's really hard to attempt to relate that to that same book or the same series of books from another platform that delivers things by chapter or article. So there's two new optional reports. They're optional probably by this fall, and this is the ones that we hope to become mandatory for the release five. Book report seven is the number of successful unique title requests by month and title and session. And the idea is all ebook hosts, hosts provide this. It would list all the books and the counter of number of times the book was used. So even if you deliver the book in, uh, so if you deliver the book as a full PDF as the book, you download the PDF, that counts as one. If the Host delivers the book as a chapter. The first chapter, for the first time you go in and grab a chapter, that's added to the book report seven. Subsequent browsing of different chapters through um, that session are not included. So you know, the idea is I have all my books, I have them on these two platforms. How many books were used? So very much like today, you know somebody checked out a print book, but you have no way of knowing how many chapters they've read, how many pages they've read, um, or even if you read any of it. Book report eight, um, and this is this is a variation on book report two, but in this report, we're providing um, the uh, the 
a separate row for metric types and the metric types we're delivering usage on are book view, which is the same as in book report seven. This book was looked at once. You only get to count one per session. If you deliver the chunks as chapters, then there would be a chapter view metric. If it's an encyclopedia or an almanac or something, a monograph with separate articles, encyclopedia, this is it, um, then you would count article views. So rather than having the content provider define the view, the uh, what is the section, we actually have discrete um, mechanisms. When we were developing this, this is where uh, we, we decided that screen views and page views did not provide any valuable data for comparability because, you know, what are those numbers? And any setting would be just completely arbitrary. So perhaps something for later, perhaps something to expect as a proprietary report from your content provider, um, but currently not um, not to this. Um, I can't see the uh, chat. I still do have one in there. Let's see if I can pull that up. And uh, the question that's in there, Oliver, is uh, uh, how were you defining full text um, uh, as HTML and PDF are generally full text? Yeah, so that's kind of an interesting one. So in that case, it was the full content that was consumed. Um, there was debate as to, and, and this is also part of the, account, the code, the release five, there's debate as to, um, you know, so you're, you, you grab the full thing, right? And in, in one sense, that full thing could be, uh, you know, the, the, the actual book or the ch actual chapter of the book versus an abstract, right? Or the actual video or the actual audio or, and so forth. And so there is the measuring how many times you got the thing um, or access the thing. And then there's the format that you use. We're trying to figure out what's the best way of, of, of representing that. Do we overload the, uh, the metric types? So you've got, you know, chapter view underscore PDF, chapter view underscore HTML. Um, so for now, we kept it simple. And, uh, and in the release five, I think we're trying to tackle that more detailed level of granularity. So this was a question. Um, oh, OK. So. Um, uh, Mike, I saw a note from you. I would see these these reports are being in release four. They're new. They're separately separately named and so forth. In release five, I mean, there's a decision to be made. Is there any value whatsoever with the old reports? I think probably not. So I suspect book report one and two would be retired. Now, do we? rename seven and eight as one and two or leave them as seven and eight that's a, a decision uh, and you're right there is no backward comparability um, and it's unlikely that a lot of content providers could provide you with the historical data uh, to fill out a, um, a uh, you know a, a book report eight from the data they had gathered to produce a book report too. So there will be a period where, um, you know, you, you kind of have apples and oranges. Uh, which brings up this other question. And I wasn't, I, I wrote it down. I, um, 
you know, it says what's the best way to normalize data to compare apples to apples. And I wasn't sure of the context of the question. So if uh, the folks who asked it could could add some context, um, you know, if it was about the book reports, um, that's kind of tough because today we know, you know, we're dealing with apples, pears, lemons, and a few bananas in there. It's a, uh, it's really hard to compare it. And we've seen situations where libraries have moved from one platform that delivers by chapter to another platform that delivers by whole book. And now they're shocked because the counts have dropped. Um, okay, do we get anything else coming? Coming in. Okay, that was okay. Angela. Okay, searches in full text across platforms. Uh, so I don't know whether you can read this, but, but Angela said that. The concern is trying to showcase data use of displacially searches in full text across platforms, having the different functions like streaming video versus still pictures versus articles. So at this point in time, we're, we're sort of stuck in this lowest common denominator world um, where you've got the um, um, you know, we're, we're probably doing a reasonable job of capturing full text articles. Uh, the uh, if there's a video or or, or a, a multimedia collection, we're storing capturing usage at the overall collection level, and that is intended. So that would be the multimedia reports. So those are intended to uh, attempt to uh, capture the. Uh, activity of, of use of actually a multimedia item. So in theory, you're covered there. Um, one of the topics of discussion recently has been, what about items? What about even an article, but an item within an article for counting accesses to data sets and accesses to some of these other things? And the current code doesn't really accommodate that all too well. I think when you're talking about comparability, you kind of have to go for those metric types that uh, sort of work, should we say, work across uh, multiple um, platforms. And that would be, you, know, you can do the full text downloads. One of the areas you mentioned searches, and that's a good one to mention because when you start getting into the area, and I think I actually had that as, as a thing, uh, you're trying to measure database value. Um, search is no longer a very good tool for that. Um, and uh, release or counter came up with the notion of result clicks and, and record views. And the result click is the fact that a user was on a search result on that platform um, and clicked on some link related to that result, a result from a given database. So if you clicked on an open URL link for uh, an article from PsycInfo, PsycInfo gets credit for the result. You clicked on full text. You clicked on uh, on uh, viewing the uh, cited references or 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 what have you. Um, the idea is that you, the user, has expressed an interest in that article, and so rather than just the fact that a uh, meta search, federated search, or discovery search happened to search 110 databases. With every search, and it's like, okay, there will have to be one of them. Um, you're actually measuring 
is your activity. Um, when it comes to searches, in theory, you can still use the platform report one, uh, and that should count unique searches done by your users um, on the platform. So if a search was against 100 databases, um, then the platform report would count that as one search. On the database reports, each database would also count that search. So if you take the sum of the searches on the databases, you're going to get 100. If you look at the platform report, you get one. Um, so the recommendation again, and this somewhat comes into I think working through with uh, organizations like uh, ARL and others that are conducting the surveys, is you know what do you mean by searches? And in that case, the theory would be I think if you're doing a search, it should be platform level searches. Um, and how do you measure? database value, and the recommendation is to use one or both of the uh, record views or record views, basically you look at the abstract, um, or result clicks, which means you, the user, saw the result and clicked on it. <clears throat> so I see some typing happening. Um, any other Questions, Matthew, any questions from your end? None from mine at this moment. Uh, I think that uh, some, I saw that some folks from S uh, Syracuse University were composing a question. Not sure if they, uh, and anybody else, again, just type any questions you have into the chat window um, about any facet of this, whether it's stuff that's been covered here or uh, stuff that you'd you know like to, to hear more about. Um, oh, there's the oh, here we go. library question. So I think the most used, this, the question is the sense of which reports are used most or least and or any reports we uh, might not be using regularly but should consider. So I think the ones that are used most are the journal reports. Uh, one and one really is the main one. Um, less so are the ones that dig into the archives. And uh, database report, I think, is another 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 big one. I think book reports are used a lot, but they're used with great frustration because they really give you numbers that leave you scratching your head. Um, so you know, they're, they're, they're less valuable. One of the things, and I should, I'm um, sorry. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide here. There's a reason for that. Um, so if you go to the uses site, there's a counter community consultation, and in that, it's a survey. I believe it's still up. And one of the questions being asked is which reports are most useful and least useful, and what do you want changed? So it would be great, I'm assuming it still works, if you could go through that, because um, I'm hoping that that information is all part of what's being gathered for, for counter release five. Um, yeah, when you come up, the other one was, was the uh, other reports we should consider. I think in terms of reports that you should consider, it's not so much the report, but the uh, metric type. And, and again, just to talk about this again, is when you're looking at your database usage, look at the, um, at the um, result clicks and record views. If you typically um, use a uh, federated search, for example, that's really the record views you want because the actual viewing of the record is happening on another site. But if you are using uh, the same platform all the time, searching is happening on 
the platform, even if it's like 3DS, for example, um, then the result clicks are probably a truer indication of a user's interest. I think usability studies kind of show that um, very few users actually drill into the detail of a record. Most of them will just go, if they're on a result list and there's the full text there, they're just going to click and go. And so that, that captures that. I'm going to, oops, US Airways, so I'll go for a trip. Hi, this is not my friend, is it? Let's search. I think it's .co.uk. Yeah, I know it is. I was trying to see if Google would do it, but you know, some yeah, you know, not even wow. Garage doors and rollers. Apparently not. Okay. Um. It's dot a uh, uses dot org dot uk. Yeah, yeah. There we go. got it. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> so what I wanted to do here, just for uh, a minute, is if you haven't seen this site, there's some interesting stuff that we've done in the useful links section. Um, we've created some templates and I won't dig into them now but this is one you know some of these I did but um, but there's a JR1 and a DP1 template that you can actually use and when you open it up you can test to see whether a uh, counter JR1 is compliant or not and um, and then if it's not compliant it shows you where the issues are so that if you're running into trouble with the content provider, it's kind of a cool way of doing that. And you just sort of take a screenshot and say, you know, the red things, those are the ones that are wrong. And there's uh, also a JR1 release three to release four template. So if you get a JR1 release three and you want to turn it into a release four, you can copy the release three into one page and then the release four automatically shows in the other worksheet. Um, and then there was some mucking around I did um, for a NISO presentation where I actually created a, uh, a, an Excel macro enabled worksheet where you could import the XML you get from the MISO sushi client. It only works for the, that one. Um, and actually load it and convert it into a JR1. Um, it's more of a proof of concept. Anybody that likes to play with these sorts of things, feel free to add to these and submit them. But, but these are the kinds of things we're trying to get up on the uh, on the use of site. And again, we're looking at the news. Um, more. Okay, so we had another question that came in. Can you talk a bit more about how to get usage for a specific database? Um, <clears throat> so your DB1 report, uh, I think if we go back to the PowerPoint, and I'm going to go back up here because we had a DB1 here. So the DB1 report, you can see it on the bottom. It Sorry, can't click and highlight. It shows the regular searches and the federated searches, but it also shows the result clicks and the record views. So if you run your, your DB1 report, um, the re regular searches are searches that were conducted by a user 
on the platform who was kind of in control of selecting the database. The federated and automated are searches that might have happened by a federated search engine. Or in the case of EDS, EDS um, searches actually the actual databases to get the best relevancy. And then doing that, those databases are searched. So those come in as federated and automated because the user doesn't have a choice as to which databases search. So that's where you'd find them. Okay. Um, so we jumped around a little bit here, but I think if you have any questions at all, uh, my email is there. Feel free to uh, send me an email directly. Um, I can share them back with Matthew and share them with the group. Um, the uh, use of site, uh, there's the link to give feedback, please do. You know, the site is intended to be there for you and to help you answer questions. So uh, if you run into problems with the vendor uh, and the reports are not looking like what you think they should look like, uh, put the sample, attach a sample to an email, um, and, and uh, you know, or send an email out to the users group, to that contact link, and um, we'll look into it. The typical success rate is that we find that the issues once uncovered by the vendor, because uh, there is kind of a threat of this problem being made public, um, they usually get fixed within a week. And, uh, and so it's really important that we can focus on that issue. Cool. So anyways, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Of course, and thank you, Oliver, for uh, for taking the time uh, 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 today and uh, for uh, being so generous to, to offer yourself up for further help. Uh, thank you to all of the uh, members of the CLRC usage group for um, uh, for kind of pulling this together and and um, uh, and helping me organize it. Uh, as I said before, if you have requests for speakers or professional development opportunities, uh, get in touch. Uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, we will post uh, a link to uh, the slides for people to, uh, to see and to have. And if you have further questions, you can get in touch with Oliver or you can get in touch with uh, me and just go to clrc.org. Uh, thanks, everybody, for taking your lunch with us. Take care. Bye-bye.